Welcome to episode 16 of Podnuts. We are joined today with Simon Zarafa from pc-technical.co.uk. He has his own computer business and has a lot of great tips. We're going to be talking about drivers, Windows updates, um, antivirus, anti-spyware, and a bunch of other great applications that you could use in your computer business or just to handle any ill or sick PCs that you're working on. If you haven't seen Podnuts Daily in the past week, you're definitely missing out. It's a live show now. It comes on 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can catch it at Podnuts Daily, and you can join the chat room at Ustream. It's a lot of fun. I gave away a prize on Friday. Um, check it out. And if you don't, if you can't check it out live, I'm still going to do the same audio podcast, so don't worry. It's going to be released every day as an audio show. So no worries there, but I think you'll have a lot of fun if you come check it out live. Okay, so we are joined with Simon Zarafa from Haverford. Haverford what, Simon, in the UK? Haverford West is the name of the town. It's ha- in southwest Wales. Okay. United uh, Kingdom. In the UK. And Simon has his own computer repair business and also has been doing a radio show in um, on the BBC, right? Yeah. I'm, um, I'm uh, called in occasionally as a sort of a guest PC doctor on a uh, BBC Wales radio show called Mouse Matt. Um, that's the sort of a guest spot I do now and again when they have questions come in from listeners. Um, and I just pop into the studio. They, I got the questions in advance, so it's you know I'm not doing a Leo Laporte or anything doing right. it live, but um, you know, but it's um, it, it's good, you know, and it pays. So you know, it can't be bad. Oh, that doesn't sound bad at all. If it pays, especially. Yeah, it's only a, a very minor guest appearance fee, but you know, it's it, it's good. It's and, a you know, any any radio appearance I think is is great. So. Sure. Um, they, uh, the shows, at least when they're on um, on air, are actually um, podcasted. While well. they're they're available for you know after the event on on the website. So if anybody is really desperate to listen to it, they can go and find it. Okay, I'll put the website in the show notes. Yeah, sure. Um, tell us about your computer repair business. Is this something that you started? Yes, it is. Um, you, you are talking to the business, as it were. Okay. Um, it's me and me uh, and me as well. Um, and I started it a couple of years ago when I um, moved into Pembrokeshire, which is the county I live in. Um, and basically, I had a couple of jobs in with, with local companies, local computer companies here, and they didn't really work out for, for various reasons. Um, so basically, at the end of the day, I thought, well, hey, let's go and do this myself. So how did you start it, and like, what, what did you do to get it up and running? Just uh, <laughs> advert in the local paper, basically, and say, uh, hey, I'm here, here's my phone number if you've got a PC problem. That's simple yeah, enough. That, that's simple enough, really. Sounds like last uh, interview I did with Bryce from Tech Nibble. He, hmm. he likes using the paper, too. Yeah, I've, I've I've stopped using our local weekly paper now because it was it was getting a bit expensive putting an advert in every, every week or every two weeks. So uh, I'm basically now just in the yellow pages. And how's Yellow Pages working for you? It actually works really well, actually. Um, I seem to get a lot. Obviously, you get word of mouth referrals as well, which is always the best way to get customers. But right. if you're um, in the Yellow Pages, my, my rationale behind that was, yeah, you know, your PC's broken, so you're not going to be looking on the Internet probably. Right. right. So where's the next place you're going to look? You know, it's probably going to be the Yellow Pages. Um, I spoke to another couple of you know small business people that do the same, not necessarily computer repairs, but they're in the sort of you know call out plumbers and things like that, and they all said, yeah, we get most of our our contacts and new customers from the yellow pages. So, huh. you know, do you have any it, do you have any tips for anybody like uh, what to put in their yellow pages ad to make it um, you know more profitable? Um, just put the basics, really. Um, I mean, the way I looked at it was effectively what I did was I did a, um, a, a just a larger version of the business card I use. Okay. As the advert, you know, uh, you know the basic information. What is what is it you do? Um, you know, where where can people find you? Uh, and that's it. That's really all they need to know. That's cool. Good. You know. Um, certainly, the yellow pages in this country are pretty hot about giving people real. Um, addresses to contact and real phone numbers, not mobile numbers. Right. So having a landline obviously is useful. I don't know. Um, I don't know how many people have them anymore around here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess in the states it's obviously different, but yeah, people have landlines here specifically oh, okay. for um, broadband. But we can come on to that later if you want to. Sure. In fact, uh, it reminds me. I was just listening to Net at Night yesterday uh, with Amber and Leo, mm-hmm. and um, she was talking about her mobile plan. She has a BlackBerry up there in Canada. Mm-hmm. And she pays like three hundred over three hundred dollars a month for her yeah. data plan. 
Yeah. Crazy. I mean, I can't imagine a lot of people in, in Canada are having like those types of phones with the yeah. prices that high. No, I can't imagine. No, I mean, I don't, I'm not sure what the exchange rate with the Canadian dollar is like, but and, I keep track of the U.S. dollar. But How is it in uh, England as far as rates for um, cell phone plans? Uh, pretty reasonable, really. I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm still on a contract mobile phone here, and I'm paying something like twenty five pounds a month. Okay, that gives me something like six hundred minutes, yeah, of call time. Um, that's to any number, really, any mobile number or any landline number, apart from like you know premium numbers, right? And you know ridiculous numbers of text messages which I never use. <laughs> that's um, not too bad. I, I thought it was more than that. Yeah, that's a pretty basic sort of, you know, mobile plan that's on a contract. So, you know, okay. yeah, that's pretty much what we pay. I mean, I, you know, two to one in the, from pounds of dollars, so that would be like $50. Right, right. I don't know what you guys pay for mobile over there, but it's... It's about that. You I know, think. it's about that, I would imagine. Yeah, okay. Sorry to get off the subject. I was just a little curious no, about fine. that. You carry on. <laughs> we're, just, we're just two guys having a chat here. You carry on. <laughs> well, what we talked about actually before the call and what I want to get into is... Um, uh, in doing computer repair, I have to install drivers almost every day, um, usually on like Windows reinstallations and whatnot. Um, I even talked about it on the Daily Show, how to slipstream drivers maybe into a Windows installation or how to get drivers installed faster um, mm -hmm. while, while, while doing the repair. And you have some good tools for that. Yes, indeed. Well, it's not my tools. <laughs> I wish I had invented them because I, I'd probably be a millionaire by now. But um, there's a, a group of guys online, and they um, their, their website is driverpacks.net. Um, and basically what they do are effectively slipstreamable driver packs, which you can add into your Windows XP home or professional or even Media Center Edition CD, if you like. Um, and basically what happens then is effectively part way through the installation process of XP, once you've done the process, which I can go over again in a minute if you want, effectively the installation process is stopped. And what they basically do is unpack um, a load of different driver packs onto the hard drive. And then when the system gets to the point where it's doing the plug and play detection of all the devices, there's literally thousands of drivers sat there waiting to be found. Um, and the system just goes ahead, and it, if it finds a driver for something that is, you know, a piece of hardware on the PC, then it just goes ahead and installs it. So by the time you get to the desktop, once you've finished your installation, you go into Driver Manager, and hey presto, your drivers are installed. Does it extend the time it takes to do the installation by a lot? Yes, it does. Um, it, not by a lot, it has to be said, um, typically. Um, the, the, the biggest portion of time is, the, well, certainly the